the chatter for quite some time now for the last couple months whether here on the channel whether twitter whether facebook groups has been the build to hard to kill and as i've said a few times december is looking much much better i feel like they're using a bit of a strategy very similar to like what all in was once upon a time where they're like, Hey, this person is all in. And they're just kind of giving us wrestlers at times. Sometimes they give us a match. Sometimes they're like, Hey, these people are showing up. Um, you know, so that appears to be the strategy. The impact fans are begging for more though. They're begging for matches. That's why the PCO versus dirty dangle match was shit on so badly. I don't even think people would have really cared. Otherwise, even though I don't think that many people want to see the match. But when we're sitting here for, for weeks begging for information for hard to kill, and then that's what you grace us with. That's why people were mad. And it kind of got me thinking is, you know, is the do they have a, a bad pay-per-view model? Do they have a poor pay-per-view model as far as when the actual shows come out? We know they do something monthly, right? There's always some kind of Impact Plus, TNA Plus show. We know this. But I feel like I'm kind of, you know, I'm looking back at things. I'm, I'm examining things. And I feel like they're a month off. I think Hard to Kill should take place in February. And I'm not in the wrestling industry. I don't work for the company. I don't know their reasoning. I don't have a clue, okay? This is me talking to you, giving my opinion, and I think it's an opinion that many agree with. Again, we're not in the industry. And I can understand wanting to kick off the new year every single year with, with a pay-per-view. I do get that. But I almost feel like that's a month where you can actually kick it off with an Impact Plus show Matches can be a little random, and it won't be so bad. You can you can tease a couple surprise appearances and stuff. There's you know, uh, I think a specialty show like bringing back lockdown or something would be the way to kick off the show. Or, excuse me, kick off the year personally. The problem with hard to kill, and I actually said this the last couple of years, and I've been saying it recently, is that it's very difficult to build because they're not actually doing television after Bound for Glory. They did, um, you know, when, when uh, it was Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega. No, excuse me. They weren't that hard to kill. I believe that was um, that six-man match when it was Motor City Machine Guns and Swan versus Good Brothers and Omega. They were able to uh, kind of announce that in, in advance, and that was a really, really big match. And it was something very different for the company. So you could kind of get away with it. But saying, you know, Moose versus Alex Shelley and... Trinity versus Jordan Grace. That's not that's not really moving the needle, right? You know, so the strategy doesn't work this time around. And it hasn't worked. We know that it hasn't worked. We, we talk about the attendance numbers and the, and the online buzz. It has not worked. But I think the show was a month too early. And I say that because, it, you know, number one, you're going against the Royal Rumble. The chatter from the Royal Rumble, if anything, right? The Royal Rumble is like, what, a couple weeks after Hard to Kill? I don't think that's a strong, you know, a strong month for one of your big four pay-per-views. If Hard to Kill was in February, it allows you to kick off the year with an Impact Plus show that you can create a couple storylines out of, and then you can do a little bit of television from there. Like, tickets could go on sale immediately after the Impact Plus show. And you're able to build... You know, maybe off that show, a third of the matches, announce them. You know, don't just build, start the build, but just announce a couple, even if they're a little random, you know, announce something and then build up to February. Because February for WWE is what? Fastlane, which is one of their more throwaway pay per views. That's where I would attack with Hard to Kill. Uh, when Rebellion. Rebellion has been going coming out, or excuse me, uh, what's the terminology? 
it's been uh, the well, the date of rebellion <laughs> has been this within a couple weeks of WrestleMania the last couple years. So if you bump it a month, you're moving rebellion past WrestleMania. And then Slammiversary doesn't really matter. You can do any, you know, you keep it the month it is, push it a month, it's whatever. I think that time frame works. And that's why it's consistently the best pay-per-view of the year because they, for the most part, have a long build up to it. Several month build that the other pay-per-views kind of lead up to. And then everything gets really, really rushed to, to Bound for Glory. But Bound, Bound for Glory, they've been doing, in the past, it's been in November, I believe. Uh, and then they had changed it to October. Um, you know, but the problem is that November is a month they take off. December is a month they take off. So if Bound for Glory were to return to November, you know, you could have it early November, have a great fallout show after it. Um, if you have to take a week off to do your fucking IPWF, do that, but do that with, instead of the Turkey suit, do one of the two, you know, and, and obviously there's probably logistic issues why they do this at the end of the year, but NWA is a way smaller company and they got one holiday episode. You know, they had something for Thanksgiving, have something for Christmas. They weren't, they didn't dominate the shows. They were normal shows. They just had some kind of theme. They had some kind of match, whatever. But they're, you know, the, that's a much smaller company and they're not phoning it in the end of the year. They're all new episodes. Matter of fact, the episodes NWA has right now has their biggest audiences of the year. They're in Florida and it's absolutely packed. But um, if, you know, if you do it in November, you, you again, have a great fallout episode. Do your throwaway week that you feel the need to have. And, um, you know, you can take that th- that uh, fallout episode to kind of build towards your final resolution show final resolution can be random it's the end of the year like i know people were kind of upset about the randomness of the card this year like i mean i guess i kind of get it it's not a huge deal for end of the year show but you know i just feel like we're a month off folks and if um if, if uh, excuse me, uh, Bound for Glory was in November and you do kind of take, take the, the month off and, you know, do final resolution in December, it, you also have your Impact Plus show in January to assist. So you've got the Impact Plus show in January, you got final resolution in December, and those can do a lot to build towards your hard to kill in February. It still gives you an opportunity to have maybe a little new television in there as well. But uh, if you guys are even following what I'm saying, I'm throwing a lot of months out there and numbers and all that shit. But I just think we're, you know, we're in a position where hard to kill is too early in January. It's almost impossible to build. You know what? We've been critical of it, but it's what's the solution? There's almost no solution because there's no fucking television to work with. I don't know what the hell episode they're going to have before hard to kill. I don't know what it was that I was thinking it was going to be a fresh episode come January. But they haven't announced tapings, you know, so that's incorrect. Like they're going to do another best of that. The fucking handful of people are going to watch. And then, um, you know, if I, if it were me and my marketing mindset and, and the way that I think when you want to promote something, you can make announcements for hard to kill hard for the pay-per-view during these shows. I think they did do that. The, the last episode, I, I think that's where they might have announced somebody, but Give a people a re, the people a reason to want to tune into the end of the year bullshit, and just say, "Hey, there's going to be big announcements for Hard to Kill." Like, there's just ways to do this, but right now, what I think they're doing just isn't working. They the strategy worked several years ago because it was the pandemic, and they had Kenny Omega, and it was it was just very different and very fresh. It was it was like once upon a time when WWE said a Rock versus John Cena year in advance. You know, obviously Kenny Omega is not on that level. But that particular match, you could announce well in advance, and it was going to do a lot to to put, well, we can't say butts in the seats, no one was there, but to get people to purchase the show. And it did, and it worked. And it was like their highest, you know, their highest grossing show and, and sold the most amount of pay-per-views. It worked, you know, but right now it's not. So um, 
it's a new era. It's TNA. And we're going to see if, if they make any kind of adjustments during the year in 2024.